Hey, it's Rick Silva with one referral away. I'm here to teach you how to build a referral-based practice so you don't have to cold call, door knock, or work with cold leads. Have you ever said things like, I need more referrals? What's the difference between a lead and a referral? I hate cold calling. There has to be a better way to get clients. I wish I got more referrals so I didn't have to spend money and time on crappy leads. I wish I had somebody who could teach me how to get more referrals. Well, look no further. Here I am. We're going to cover all of that and a whole lot more coming up. Rick, you teach networking? How do you do that for a living? I network. I hand out my cards everywhere I go. So let's start off with lesson number one. Handing out your business cards is not networking. That's called marketing. That is not networking. So if you're handing out your cards, fantastic. You're a great marketer. That is not networking. But these are the three comments I got when I emailed uh, Carla and said, if anybody has any questions or comments, I think setting the right expectations is important with referrals and taking care of them with the highest level of service is high up on the list. I think one thing to address is that just because someone was referring to you doesn't mean they're a slam dunk client. You have to earn their trust in business. 100% agree. I will add to that, that if they were referred to you, you don't have to try as hard, but yes, you should try hard. Second one is making sure that incoming referrals are qualified referrals. And I love the getting your phone to ring once or twice a week. How do we make sure we're getting the calls that are referrals we can service in our niche Oh boy, we covering that today. How'd you do over 650 real estate transactions with only referrals? I don't know any other way to do it because I won't work with, if you gave me a lead, I wouldn't call them. I don't work with leads and we'll get into that. I don't believe in leads. I don't believe in cold calling and I don't really believe in uh, too many forms of marketing because leads, let me just tell you now, so I don't say it later. I sell referral courses, love leads. They go into a funnel, they watch a couple videos, they buy my course, awesome. I don't have to spend any time with them. Real estate, mortgage, insurance, financial planning, those are the four industries I work with the most. <clears throat> and real estate agents, sometimes you have to spend one, two, three, four, five hours with somebody to even get them to sign a contract so they actually become a client. Leads are too hard to close. And I'm in, I'm in a couple groups on Facebook where there's like 130,000 real estate agents in there. And I see all these comments. I showed a guy 50 homes and right at the last second, right when he was going to go sign the contract, he goes, I'd like 30% of your commission. Or I, I'm talking to them. I spent all this time and they're right at the last minute. They went with somebody else. Or they're asking for discounts. All of these complaints, people no showed all of this stuff. 99% of it works with people who have a lead based practice not a referral-based practice. The main reason I don't work with leads is because they take too long and there's too much time involved with somebody to have them walk. If you get a refer, and I mean a real referral, I mean, I'm sitting with my CPA, he's looking at my finances and I go, you know what? I'm doing pretty well. I think I'd like to buy a rental property. If my CPA pulls out a card and says, call this person, they're the best real estate agent, blah, blah, blah. When you as the agent get a phone call and I call you on the phone to say, hey, uh, Adele, Adela, my CPA told me to call you. I'm ready to buy a home. That's 99% done. My CPA told me to call you. So that's a referral. Actually, that's not even a referral yet. And I'll get into what a referral is. A referral is very, very, very highly qualified. So professional networkers do not look for business or referrals. They don't cold call. They don't know or knock. They don't run Facebook ads. They teach other people how to find them referrals. Fully 84% of all sales that will happen in America are due to word of mouth. The only way to be in the top 10% in your industry to have these people selling for you at every opportunity, we want, we want to get to the point where we're never prospecting. That's why I'm going to tell people you should never, ever look for business. They go, you're a moron. I go, I've never looked for business. I find people who already have the business. I teach them how to send it to me. I want to tell you something that I know this. Now, I've never sold a home, been involved in selling, you know, seven or 800 pieces of land. But I've worked with gazillions of mortgage lenders or real estates. I know this. If somebody wants to sell their home, the first person they should talk to is a mortgage lender. That's number one. But most people go to real estate because they don't realize that. But let me tell you this. I'm going to give you just a, a little niche. There are some people who are going to remodel their home, who are going to paint the walls, who are going to clean the carpets, who are going to get new furniture because they're too embarrassed to have a real estate agent come over. Now, I know two carpet cleaners personally that have many times come into a home and the person said, I'm even embarrassed to have the carpet cleaner. My house is filthy. We're going to clean it up. And then we're thinking about selling. If you real estate agents out there taught that carpet cleaner, hey, anytime you walk into a home and you hear a homeowner say, we want to clean the house and then we're going to sell it. Hey, we're getting the house ready to sell because we're going to downsize. Hey, 
uh, we're relocating to XYZ area. Please think of me. I just fired his reticular activating system. He opens up his little his little wallet or goes in his car and he pulls out a card. After we clean the house, call this real estate agent. Good friend of mine, they can help you. Hey, thanks for watching this for if you're getting value out of this video, please like and subscribe, really help the channel out. And any questions, any topics you'd like to cover regarding networking and referral generation, just put it down in the comments. Back to the video. If you spent your whole life just networking with carpet cleaners, I guarantee you, you are going to make home sales. Okay, you're welcome. You didn't pay for that. You're welcome. Meet with people at schools and carpet cleaners. Did I take you outside of your box? I hope so. Find people who already know about homes being sold. Carpet cleaners know, handymen know, mortgage lenders, CPAs, financial planners, on and on and on and on. You're either going to become a professional network or a professional cold caller. I hope you pick the first. I'm not going to read all this to you. You should cold call in the beginning, but then your goal is to get out of that and build a referral-based practice. Some nice little funnies. Might seem as if being nice. I'm actually just networking. We're not gossiping. We're networking. I try networking with everybody else I know is unemployed. The currency of real networking is not greed, is generosity. This is what your life needs to be. <clears throat> as a real estate agent, I, I was meeting one years ago, and she, uh, a Pete's Coffee, like 10 years ago, and she takes her, and she goes like this, and she goes, real estate agents we stir the pot for a lot of industry. So if the real estate agent goes in there and you need a carpet cleaner, a handyman, financial planner, roofer, painter, whatever. You, but guess what? This is where most people fail. You have built this network. You have a carpet cleaner, a handyman, a roofer, a financial planner, a CPA, a banker. Do you see the lines? All the lines just don't go to you. They also connect. Do you see how the lines connect to each other? You should be introducing your carpet cleaner to your handyman, your handyman to your painter, your electrician to your roofer. When you introduce your network to your network, you are on another level. Biggest failure I see is soon somebody starts to get busy. Oh my God, I got I got all these deals going. The second they start to get busy, they they stop networking. I'm too busy, I can't handle it. Well then guess what? When you have like 10 deals going, you close six, four fall off. And overnight, you have no business. Whether you lost them or you closed them, either way, you're now unemployed. Business is tanking. And now you go, OS, I got to start. I got to pick up the biz dev because I have no business now. So this is called stress. And this is what your income looks like. So we want to have a life, if you look at my hand, that looks like this. Now, I'm really busy. Oh, my God. I'm really busy. No. Because I've had $300,000 months before. And if your next month, and if the month before you didn't do any lead gen or referral generation, you have a $300,000 month, but the lead before, the month before you didn't do anything because you were so busy, the next month you have a zero, you didn't have a $300,000 month. If you have a three fifty, a three hundred and then a zero, you had a hundred, you had a $150,000 month. You only have a $350,000 month when you back it up. When the next month is zero, it's because you didn't stay consistent with your biz dev. This is where I'd like you. This is where you're going to be in the beginning, but not hopefully not for too long. I'd like to see you have a ton of referrals coming in. A lead is a name and number. Hey, I saw your ad. Hey, I, you know, I saw a Facebook ad or I saw whatever. I saw a LinkedIn post. That's a lead. <clears throat> a referral came from a trusted advisor. This is the biggie that I will, I'm willing to bet everything I've ever earned in my life and everything I'll ever earn that 99.99, I'll leave hope that one of you had done it. 99.9999999% of you have never done. You get a referral from a power partner and then you call the client. I have a prospect profile, which I think Carla has seen. And it's a list of questions. And if, if let's say Carla's going to send me a, a referral for my land investing business, I'm going to send Carl, Carla about 10 or 15 questions. If Carla doesn't send it back, I do not call the person. If Carla, Carla says, here's their name and number, and I think that you should probably contact them, they might be interested. I'm not calling them. I do not call leads. I don't chase people. People chase me. So if a, if a qualified power partner sends you a referral, next step is get a prospect profile filled out, and then you research them on LinkedIn and Facebook, and I could spend hours on this, but the number one reason is to do two things on LinkedIn and Facebook. Look to see where they went to school and where they've lived and look at the pictures they post. Because the pictures they post, if Carla posts pictures of being on boats and traveling, 
then I'm going to show her pictures of when I've been to Tahiti and all that. If Carla posts pictures of gardening, I got pictures of tomatoes. When I meet with Carla ultimately to do my sit down at the coffee table presentation, I want to build trust and rapport. I already did my recon. I already know Carla likes to travel or she likes tomatoes. And I incorporate that into my presentation without saying, hey, Carla, I stalked you on Facebook. I found out what you like. And I built my presentation based on what I thought. No, I just do it. You can't do that unless you do recon. Leads leave quicker. Uh, you will make a quicker sale a lot of times because they came in, but you can't build a career uh, with that because they also leave quickly. They cost a lot of money to get. They stand you up. They ask for discounts, referrals. They leave slower. Uh, sometimes they take a little longer to get going because if somebody calls you today and says, I want to buy a home and you sell them a home tomorrow, awesome. But what's the percentage that stand you up, don't show up at the last minute, they, they go to sign the contract. How much are you earning on this? I'd like 10000 I'd like 5000 that doesn't happen when you have referrals. Cold calling and door knocking demeans the industry. Good luck if it's raining outside. It makes you look desperate. Dentists, doctors, and attorneys don't cold call. You got to get all the software. You got to get fired up. The average salesperson spends 15 to 35 hours a week looking for business. Referrals, people are calling you on the phone. You're an order taker. Uh, you teach your network how to send you business. You don't have to pay for business coming in. And then you're hopefully cutting 10 to 15 hours a week out of looking for business. The, and I already covered this. The show up rate's much higher. Referrals are easier to close. Um, you can fire them. Hey, thanks again for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Do me a favor, like and subscribe. Right about here should be two more videos for you to watch. Keep on networking.